So today I'm gonna go ahead and see how this works. I'm gonna use the GoPro. This is the GoPro 7. I forgot my Hero 8 at home. So this is the 7 Black and I've got an audio adapter on it. And what we're doing this morning is our, our roof is not on yet and we wanna do that, but it's kind of frosty outside, so we can't get up there, or we can, but it's just not that safe. We're gonna work on the ground for a little while this morning. It's all stuff that's gotta get done. And I'm gonna turn you around, I'll show you what we've got going on. Greg is using the Stabila laser to grab some dimensions from bracket to bracket. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put what we call our rat board down here. Maybe you've seen us do it. If you're new to the channel, this is what creates our barrier between the exterior and interior. I'm not a fan of pouring your concrete floor out to the grade board. And essentially our goal is to create a barrier between the exterior cold weather and the interior. Now this is a floating slab, so it will have movement. We don't wanna lock it underneath our wall per se. We wanna kinda of let that thing move somewhat freely on the interior and the structure of the building is gonna stay put. So that rat barrier is gonna prevent any critters from coming up into your wall and it's gonna give your your concrete slab, a little bit of protection from the exterior um, you know, climate. I think it's a great detail. And I actually did a video on the insulation detail of our buildings. So if you're interested, go back and check that out. I'll try and tag it over here on uh, this video with a link. So if you want, you can pause this, go take a look at that and come on back. But we're gonna get started. The thing that we have to do, our columns are made by Ohio Timberland and they're laminated glued and they're surface milled on all four sides to bring them to a true dimension so when they all come together everything is precise versus using you know just stock lumber sometimes it can be off an eighth inch here or there and they just you know mill everything perfect glue it together but what that means is our dimension of our wall is not a true five and a half it's like five and three eighths so when we go buy traditional lumber to frame up things like our rat board or our windows and doors, we gotta rip it down. So that's the other thing we're doing. We're just getting this cut hub set up, super efficient, and it's just a nice, safe way to uh, work. So now you can see what we're doing with this rat board. We ripped it down to the dimension of our columns, marked and cut out where these bolts come through because unfortunately it's like right there. But we wanna make sure those are as tight as possible just to keep as you know much critters out. No matter what, bugs find their way in, window seals, door seals. But obviously it's nice to, to do as much as you can for the furry guys like mice. I hate mice, don't want them in your walls. We're gonna use some GRKs. Uh, these are structural screws made for treated lumber outdoor application. It's a good way to go. So once we have our rat barrier here, we're gonna come in with a, another treated grade board. And you can see what we've created here. It's a nice little U. Uh, this is kind of like our, I guess whenever we're gonna do an insulated package, this is what we do, this is our detail. It's gonna create a barrier from any pest coming in. We're gonna get our interior form for our concrete to be poured against. So I like it, I think it's a great detail. Adds a little bit of time to the build instead of just putting the outside up, running your steel, pouring your concrete, and then coming in and doing your interior. Good on your side.
Oh, I gotta do the math. So what we're doing this morning, first thing is laying out this porch. We've got a porch that goes 32 foot down the wall, comes out eight foot and wraps around. There's gonna be a nice little gable. 40 foot run, eight foot rise. We're 40 foot nine and a half. So you gonna burn me a foot then? Yep. Okay, so 41 foot nine and a half. Let's see where we're at. I've already laid out a pin on that end down there, pulling a diagonal off of this corner and from where Greg was back. I pulled that dimension and then I did the opposite to get this pin, I don't know if you can see it right here. Then what I did is basically the same exact thing on this corner. Now all I'm doing is double checking my uh, diagonal to see if this pin I just dropped coming off of that corner is good. So what I say, Greg? 40 foot, nine and a half. So 41 foot, nine and a half money. So now we can get these lines. Let's just throw a string between it. It's a lot better. We got a string right here. Tape measures are kind of wonky. Yeah, wonky. This is gonna get us good enough. We're gonna be digging an 18 inch pier for a five and a half inch post. So we're gonna try to hit right on the money. Oh, and I gotta go eight foot exact. I just sprayed over my string line. Are people gonna lose their mind, Greg? So we're doing eight foot centers. Now, whenever we dig these piers, I get a lot of people that, you know, say, hey, why aren't your post or your brackets like directly in the center of your pier? When we dig these holes, if they don't go perfect because of some rock or a tree root or something, uh, we have two options. We can either, you know, dig the hole out bigger so that we can hit the exact center. But what that means is that we then have to do a bunch of uh, backfill around our pier. I want virgin ground. It's the best ground to have as backfill. That's why we kind of do our best to hit it on the first take. And it's okay if the pier is just off center from your column or the column is not dead center on the pier. It ain't going anywhere, guys, I promise. Because of the layout of our ribs on the wall, we wanted this to all make sense and work from a water flashing standpoint. Instead of staying with the eight foot of spacing, these front porch columns are eight foot, four and a half inches apart. And the reason I did that, maybe it'll make sense later. Two things, I wanted my, my porch edge, my fascia, where my gutter is at and all that water flashing detail coming off the roof. I didn't want it to die on a rib. And another thing I didn't want is I didn't want my peak of the porch, this gable, I didn't want it dying directly on the corner. So I wanted it offset on the inside of the building. That way we can have a nice spot for our ridge cap to die in. And uh, you'll see that here in the future, but what it means is that our porch spacing on the front is not an eight foot, but I don't think anybody's gonna even notice. Oh, thought I was gonna spray my tape, didn't you? Let's see, I do wanna be about right here. There. That'll work. Well, the client did tell us that there was a bunch of buildings buried here, Greg. Oh, what is that? What is that? I saw something. Did you see it? Uh -huh. Yeah, it's a big old rock. I think. Big old rock. Yeah. It's throwing, it was throwing off my auger and doing all sorts of things. Well, we got all of our other holes dug. I think fairly decent. A couple of them. Oh, I gotta go through it? Yeah. I got that concrete Oh yeah. Nice piece of concrete down there in the bottom of this one. Eight. 
16th. Yep. That's perfect. You can't finish that, Greg. All right. I like that. I think you're going to be just fine, man. We'll make that work. Yeah. You've done this a couple times, huh? Beautiful. Man. Just for you, Greg. Yeah, I got her, man. Okay, now how do I run this again? I'm joking, I'm joking. It's gonna be the cleanest piers ever, Greg. It's all on you, man. Here you go, sir. I'll let you do what you ever, whatever you wanna do. Make sure that you're just, you feel real good about the way it ends up, you know? <laughs> it's gonna make it whatever's left to shoot. It's gonna be here somewhere. You might wanna get your kids out here, Ryan. They're gonna wanna put their initials in this one. Now what we got going on right here, this is a cutout for our gutter. So we make sure that this is extended out past our gutter and our gutter comes all the way to the edge of our fascia here, tucks underneath, all the water will come down and go into that gutter. And then this also gives it a nice little cap on the end. So it looks like a nice little one piece seamless thing going on. Simple detail. Yeah, that's all right. Right there. Take the top and just a hair. Well, I mean, like a hair. I mean, like a hair. hair. Yeah, push it in just a hair. Too much. Yeah, dude. Right there. Take it up. Take it up just a little bit more. Yeah. Right there? Yeah, yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We like to go ahead and take a dimension of the trim, and then we can snap a line to that dimension. So that's what we got going right through here. Snap a line. That way it's perfectly straight. Go ahead and uh, 
think it was 160. Yeah. Plus 17. I brought a whole other bag up for somebody. 